my parents need to retire and I'm stuck financing it. How about that? What a doozy. Well, howdy fi guys. My parents are age 69 and 66. They are reaching a point where they need to slow down and find a more affordable place to live on their social security income. Yeah, that's that's kind of would you consider that a fixed income? Because I know sometimes it goes up. Oh, it's definitely yeah, fixed. Social security, it, social security is a fixed income. Yes, you do have a, a COLA cost of living adjustment mm -hmm. every year that goes with the rate of inflation. But mm -hmm. yeah, there's no way you're going to be getting like a, I want, I want more. Than that. <laughs> you can't negotiate so, yes. it. Is what social you're saying. Security, you can't negotiate. We did a pot on that. You know, maybe you know, find another social social security or nothing, <laughs> nothing like that. So anyway, um, that was a joke. There's only one social security. Don't get scammed. Together, we are receiving around thirty four hundred dollars a month. My dad is currently working full time, earning approximately fourteen hundred dollars a month. Uh, that's gross every two weeks. But he's considering reducing his hours or completely retiring altogether. Unfortunately, okay. unfortunately, they have almost no savings and are burdened <laughs> with a significant amount of debt. Now, it doesn't say how much debt, but at the end of the story, we will, you'll figure it out a little bit more. So they have a significant amount of debt, including credit cards debt and medical expenses. Very expensive. We know about that. With very low credit scores of 502 and 512. Man, you got to try. That's, <laughs> I'm worried. You got to try. I'm worried. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. We'll get through this. We can do this. Currently, we are all living together in a rented home. Okay. Our current rent is $2,050. Okay. 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 While I have a stable job and could afford an independent life, I'm financially supporting them due to their situation. My sister also works, but has a more sporadic income due to health issues. Sorry to hear about that. Man, if you don't have health, you don't have anything. Like, that's, oh. that's really tough for your sister. I'm sorry to hear that, man. Oh, man. Tough. I recently financed a car for them after their previous one was totaled. Okay. Oh. That sucks. Moving on. Moving on. Which adds another $250 to my monthly expenses. Honestly, $250, you're getting out easy. You're getting out easy. Yeah. I hate to I think the average car payment right now is like $700. It's like $700. Or something, it's, it's so much money. Something, something stupid. It's so much yeah. money. It's so much money. It's so much money. It's over like, it's over like $8,000 a year. It's crazy. Two fifty. Listen, that's not bad. That's actually pretty good. They, they probably have like a, a Kia Soul or listen. Just like, I won't hate on the Kia that Soul. PT Cru that PT Cruiser life. I might hate on a PT Cruiser. I'm not gonna lie on that one. Um, yeah. Hopefully, the two fifty is, which I doubt, but I'm hoping that's including insurance. I doubt. I doubt. I doubt. I doubt. No, there's I doubt. no way. I there's doubt. no I way. Doubt. I hate to say it. I doubt it. I doubt. No. I wish that'd be great. Unless you got like the most like. Crazy, I don't know. I, I don't know. Even beat with, up, I don't know. Beat up piece POS that you ever seen in your life, dude. Dude, I don't know. I don't know. All right, I'm gonna stop railing these guys. So, both my sister and I plan to move out after a year. A hey, good, good information. I've been considering buying a manufactured home for them to rent from me. It's like a, it's like a reverse, like house hacking. I feel like I don't know something. I don't know. It's, it seems. It seems. Seems interesting. As they tend to be more affordable, the manufacturing homes is what they're talking about. However, in our area, lot rents make them comparable to regular home costs. Okay, okay. Oh, so, I wonder where they live. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's kind of crazy. Me personally, I'm picking a house. Although I will say, I will say, I'm in some really nice manufactured homes. I wouldn't, I would not choose it. Let me tell you, one of the coziest places I've ever been was the span of like five years where my dad and I would go over to the family friend's house and watch Sunday football. Let me tell you, it was cozy. So big shout out nice. to the bear. That was his name. Anyway, a lot of, a lot of behind the scenes, a lot of, a lot of lore here today on today's episode. So they've been considering buying a manufactured home for them to rent from the child to the parents. Okay. We know that there's $3,400 in social security that should be sufficient for them to afford a one bedroom in a senior community, but I'm worried about their credit scores. That's a valid concern. Would cons yeah. Excuse me. What is this next sentence? Would consulting a bankruptcy lawyer be advised for them? Oh, huh. I feel lost and unsure of where to start. I can't continue to shoulder their financial responsibilities, especially after the expenses incurred from our recent. Thanks for any advice you can provide. From helping my folks find a place 
with Social Security as their base. Well, that is a doozy. Uh, 512 and 502, that's a bit of a concern. Understandably a concern for the child here. What do we got, Chris? So when I hear this, first off, to our friend who wrote in, that's really tough being a kid of a parent that did not set themselves up. So I will speak to the kid and tell my advice to him. But first, before I do that, I want to talk to parents. Parents, if you have kids and you are not being financially responsible, you are not taking care of your own responsibility, your own retirement, then that means by definition that your retirement plan is your kids. Mm -hmm. Your retirement plan is to burden your kids like this young man is with his parents in order to financially support them. And that is not fair. If you guys had an agreement that, hey, we're, we're going to put you through college, we're going to do all this stuff for you, and we expect that you will take care of us in our older age, that's totally fine. I'm not going to knock that. There are cultures where that's totally fine. Yep. But if you're just going to write it out, see what happens, and like, we'll just leave it up to the Lord, that basically means you're going to burden your kid to support you. And now you burden your son and your daughter to be hamstrung to support you in your retirement. Mm -hmm. So. To, th to this, to our writer and to their parents, retirement is a financial status, not an age. Yeah. It's not a requirement. It's, 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 yeah. yeah. Carry on. Honestly, I think your parents, they need to wake up. People don't just get to retire because they're finally tired of working. People get to retire when they have enough money prepared and they no longer need to work. Mm -hmm. You can't just hit a magic age, 60, whatever. 69 and 66 and just be like, all right, I'm done. I'm, I've reached my magic age. So with that being said, no, it's not a good idea for your dad to stop working. Can he cut back his hours if he's, if he's really struggling? Yes, of course. But if he still has credit card debt and medical expenses, and we have a fixed income of $3,400 for, from the social security, that's at least guaranteed. We know we're going to keep on getting that. But I don't know how much medical debt and how much credit card debt you have. And more importantly, I don't know what your parents' spending is a month. So I don't know if $3,400 is enough for them. On average, that should be enough for two people to find a one-bedroom apartment or a one-bedroom place. But if they're $50,000, $100,000, God knows what amount in debt, you have to pay for those debts too. And that's going to be taken out of that money. When it comes to buying the manufactured home and having your parents rent, quote unquote, rent from you, mm -hmm. we already know what's going to happen. They're not going to pay you. Yeah. And then you're going to have to pay for it yourself. And now we're going to have to add in all of this mess, family mess that's going to have to happen too, because now we're fighting with our parents. You've already had to buy them a car. Yeah. You're, I, I'm not sure if they're paying for rent at all right now with you and your sister, or if you and your sister are paying for that tab and they're maybe just covering food and stuff, but these parents' failure to plan for their future is now holding back the, the, their son and their daughter who has medical issues and really should be focusing on herself and getting better. Because if you don't have health, you don't have anything. And I, I have to imagine that this level of stress isn't good for her and getting better. That's so true. That's so true. Yeah, that's way better. I'm telling you, Chris, you got to understand, for this podcast to work, guys, Chris is the master. I am the learner, right? I'm the student. He's the master. My plan was just put him in the manufacturing home and then just jack up the rent, honestly. Um, <laughs> you know, but Chris has a way better idea, way better than mine, you know. But uh, yeah, I think it's hard to make new habits, especially if you're older. 500 credit score. You have to try, you gotta to get try that for that. That's not, that's, 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 that's beyond bad financial literacy. That's like, like we're competing at this point. Because it goes down to like 480, no? Or it's, it, I don't even know the bottom. Uh, I think it's 350. I think it's 350. 350, 350 okay, okay. to 850. Not, I think. We're not at the bottom. I've never, I've never tried to hit the bottom. No, so no, know. no. Could be a fun challenge, though. How, you know, it's like, it's, I, it's, it's hold on. It's kind of like those personal trainers who that get fat and then they, they, they build back to get their six pack. It's kind of like that. You could be the first one know, to do it. I, I, I have an 815 right now, and I'm going to try to keep that up there. Dude, um, I'm tell, we could speed run to the bottom, Chris. It could be entertaining. You know, my, I have an 815. They have, if I was to reverse that, it'd be a 518, which is close to theirs. That's so sad. <laughs> that bumps me out so much. You can, you can invert my numbers and have their numbers. That's so sad. Oh, Okay. We talk about this all the time. It, it, it's it's so important to be financially literate, guys. If you want to buy a house, if you want to 
if you want to retire, you know, this whole podcast is based around financial independence, right? Retiring early. We like that. I know Chris said 68, 69, 69 and a half, whatever the magic number that the government sets is the quote unquote retirement age. That is not mandated. That's not, it's not law. Like it's not a requirement. Like that's a, that's a, yeah. a reward for being financially, you know, proper and, and educated, you know, but at the same time, retirement doesn't have to be at 68. It can be at 58 or 48 or 38 or 78 or 88. Some people like to work into their old age. Some people don't like to work. You know, it's all about how you plan your life. And you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And when you fail to plan and you have dependents, you're bringing them with. So I, yeah. I, I'm grateful that this person is watching the podcast. I'm grateful that they have a willingness to actually learn. Because you can't get to a 502 in two months. Probably not well, even to in- be fair. It's the- Go for it. It's the parents. The, pa- the yeah. parents aren't the ones writing in. It's the kid writing in. Yeah, yeah. So I'm grateful so, for the for the. Did I say the parents? I did say the parents tonight. Yeah, I kind, yeah. Of, kind of sounded that. My way. bad. My bad. My bad. I'm grateful for the the son or daughter that wrote in in this situation, trying to better themselves, trying to figure it out. Yeah, you know, like Chris gave his his thoughts on it. You know, you know, I, I don't. Yeah, and and I, and I have a few. <laughs> I have a few more actually. So when it comes to the credit score. I first would probably preface you to go back to episode 26 of the Fly Guys. If your parents are willing to try to work on that, I break down everything that that makes up your credit score and more importantly, how to improve your credit score. Because if we know the number, that's well and good, but we need to know what makes up that number. Then we need to know what we need to do to make that number better. Because your credit score ultimately is a grade that says how worthy are you of borrowing money. And if you have a shitty grade, if for these parents an F, no one's going to want to give you money. And that could really be an issue for senior housing. So if I was you, I would start calling around your local senior housing and see if you can get on the wait list for them. Typically, my understanding here in Arizona, credit score does not matter given that they have social security and the income. But in your state, it very well could matter. That credit score could be a huge detriment to them getting into that. But with they're making $3,400 a month, that should very well cover a one room in a senior living facility. But if they have credit card debt, medical debt, and if their expenses are also all equaling $3,400 or $3,000 or $2,500, that's not giving you a lot of room to be able to purchase that, that one bedroom place. So I don't know how much your parents are currently paying in rent. If they're not paying anything, then that means majority of the money is going to go just to covering the house. And that doesn't leave any money for food, electricity, the bills. So your parents really can't stop working until they have those things under control. Mm -hmm. When it comes to bankruptcy, I do not have enough information. I don't know how much debt is significant amount of debt. Significant to you could be $5,000. Significant to you could be $500,000. Those are two very different things. So when it comes to bankruptcy, it is a no joke situation. I would first go to episode 32 of the five guys. We talk all about bankruptcy, the different types and where you're thinking about going down that rabbit hole. But yeah, maybe depending on the situation, bankruptcy might be a good course of action, especially if they don't have anything to their name currently, Mm -hmm. because then there's nothing for them really to take. And I don't know how you purchase the car. If it's in your name, you're just letting them borrow it, but then they could declare bankruptcy. I don't know. Actually, I don't want to go into it too deeply because I don't want to start giving you weird things, but the most important thing is your parent, your parents need to re- understand is that retirement is a financial status, not an age. Yeah. Just because you hit a magic number, it does not mean that you magically don't have to work anymore. You get to not work by being financially responsible enough to get to the point that you don't need to work anymore. You can retire at 30 years old, given that you are financially responsible enough to make enough money, have enough assets that are paying you enough income for you to be able to then lower your lifestyle down enough to live. If you're willing to have a lifestyle that is worth, I don't know, $10,000, then you could have a pretty great retirement like right now. But good luck living on $10,000 a month. It all depends on where you live, too. You know, if you live out in Ohio. $10,000 a year. Yeah, $10,000 a year. You said a year, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I said a month, but I meant Yeah, because I was like, hey, yeah, I just wanted to, I'm glad you clarified that because I'm like, there's a lot of people who, I mean, everybody can live on 10K a month, but. Yeah, 10k I, a year I think, I think i'd be fine <laughs> yeah i don't know chris i don't know man it'd be tough you know the ferrari payments and all that um no I, man see guys i don't know how tech savvy the parents are 
but this is a prime example of why you can't use ChatGPT for all your financial advice, okay? We already talked about how ChatGPT gets an F score in finance, right? It's so important. Whatever stage you're at, you know, educate yourself with books. Make sure that it's a trusted source. Make sure it's a respectable source. Um, and if you're at that stage of your life where you start, you know, you start making money, maybe it's time to get a financial advisor. Make sure everything's dialed in for the future. You know, you want to be prepared. You don't want to have to burden your kids. It's not fun being a burden. It's not fun. No. Nobody wants to be a burden. So no, and I, I'm sure these parents, their thought was never, I can't wait to get to retirement. It's going to be a burden on my kids. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Their thought was probably like, it'll work out. It, it'll be fine. Uh, uh, it'll be fine. I'm sure that was their thought. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. But eventually, you just keep on saying it'll be fine long enough. Eventually, you hit that day where it better be fine. And most of the time, if you just kept on saying it will be fine eventually, you're never going to actually get there. Because yeah. you actually put in the work every single day to get you to the destination you want to go. Yep. You don't just hop inside your car and say, Google, take me somewhere. You hop inside your car and say, Google, take me to this destination. You need to know which destination is. I never just driven and just being like, I don't know what happens. We're just going to see where I end up. I don't know <laughs> what would happen in that situation. No, no, that's true. Well, I hope that I hope that helped you guys. Best of luck. Genuinely, best of luck. Um, yeah. Do you think seeking a financial advisor for them would be a good idea, Chris? I don't know what a financial advisor could really do at this point. <laughs> I guess it might be good to like maybe look at some, just maybe to get some advice, like how much debt do we have? Like they, they really need to know their numbers. Yeah. And I don't know if the son knows the numbers. That's why he didn't include them. But if the son doesn't know the numbers, the parents probably don't know the numbers. And if you don't know the numbers, there's really not a lot of help that anyone can do. Yeah. You can go to a financial advisor and be like, be my hero, fix it. But no financial advisor some financial advisors will market themselves as the hero, but no financial advisor will be the hero to you. Yeah. You're the hero of your own story. Your financial advisor is your guide to getting you there. So maybe a financial advisor could guide you out of this mess that you find yourself in. But ultimately, they're the ones you have to put in the work every single day to get where they want to go. Yeah. And right now, you're really at the end of their rope. And that just kind of sucks. And you might have to keep on working until you drop. And I'm sorry to say that, but that's the situation that they're in due to choices they made in the past. Best of luck. Best of luck. This video podcast is sponsored by Monzon Wealth. The content in this podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be considered financial advice. We do not endorse specific products or services. Past performance does not guarantee future results. The opinions expressed are those of the hosts and guests, not the podcast sponsor. It is crucial to consult with a qualified financial advisor or professional who can provide advice tailored to your specific needs before making any financial decisions, investments, or taking any other actions. If you are seeking specified help, you can reach out to Chris at monsonwealth.com.